What is an oratorio concert, and what should one expect if he or she is attending one for the first time? Hunter University voice professor Susan Gonzalez explains the characteristics of this religious-themed musical narrative and encourages the audience to stay in the moment. My name is Susan Gonzalez, and I run the voice program here at Hunter College, and I happen to be the opera director for Hunter Opera Theater. Uh, my background in music is rather extensive. I've been singing for over 51 years. I started as a child, and I decided at that point in time that I wanted to expand from trying to sing rock and roll into doing something classical. I think one of the first things I ever sang was oratorio because I was in choirs as a young singer and it was my first exposure to classical music. When you're young, you're not old enough to, or mature enough to really sing classical music uh, as a soloist yet. Um, I went from being a choir singer in high school, to doing musicals, to going to Cincinnati Conservatory for my undergraduate. And then I was on the road singing professionally, both opera and oratorio for about 10 years. Then I decided after having my son to go back and get my doctorate at Eastman School of Music. And upon graduating literally that same year within two months, I got the job here at Hunter, and I've been here for 25 years running the program. An oratorio is exactly, it's named by what, what it actually rep represents, oratory, to, to speak of something. Uh, it was intended to be a stand and sing event. It wasn't intended to be staged like an opera. And it's generally a uh, religious and performed by orchestra, chorus, and soloists. Well, I think the most performed one is Handel's Messiah. Um, language skills and style. And all of that is incorporated in an oratorio. A Baroque opera and a Baroque oratorio are gonna have very similar styles and virtuosic passages. Uh, the same would be for the classical and the romantic and the contemporary. They, are, they map each other in terms of styles. So the real difference is content. What's different about oratorio is that you have, I would consider it more like an absolute music. There's no distractions of costumes or lighting. You have, there's no character development. But what you have is just the purity of the music the vocal technique, you, the audience, the orchestra, the chorus, that's it. You know, it's that, it's that more intimate sort of communication, I think, in that way. Whereas an opera kind of builds a fourth wall of voyeurs, like the, of the audience, looking into some kind of a private setting, per se. Whereas in an oratorio, you come out as yourself, you address the audience. So it's, it's a purer form a performance in that way. My favorite place that I have ever sung is Carnegie Hall. The acoustics are perfect there. I've never been anywhere where you could hear a pin drop in the house and it would sound all over the house. Singing from that stage is probably one of the most gratifying things I've ever done. Just the way that it, the way that it bounces around the room and uh, the way that the voice kind of open up, opens up and, and vibrates through that, that, that structured phenomenal. Uh, Geffen Hall is extremely difficult acoustically, I think, because it's built a little bit like a barn. You know, it's, it's long. It's very long hall, and uh, it's not nearly as acoustically gracious as Carnegie Hall. So you stay in the moment, watch the conductor, really trust that you know this piece, but stay present. Don't think backwards and forwards in the music. But when you're in a hall, such as any hall, I don't care where it is in the world, when you sit quietly and you listen and you watch and you don't get distracted by media, you turn off your phones, not silent, turn off your phones, 
you know, I know that there's all kinds of uh, checking in and, and tweeting and, and, and maybe that's part of the media um, moments of live performance now, as I understand it. I don't like it. I think it's a live performance. Why do we go to live performances? Why not watch them on, on the tube? Why, why, why be connected to film, film and I mean media at all? We go to live performances because we want the risk of what might happen in that moment. It's not a replay. It's not cut and edited. It is that moment, that piece of music, and you're part of the performance by just sitting there and being in that energy. So I think out of respect to the performers and out of respect for the other people in the audience, you need to sit quietly, watch, and listen. If it's a good conductor, and I hope it is, then uh, you have to depend on the conductor because he's the only one that can hear everything the way it's going to hit the hall because the orchestra's in front of him and the chorus behind that. So if you're behind the orchestra, I'm assuming that's how it's set up because that's how most oratorios are set up, then you know, you're going to hear the orchestra is going to go this way and then back, ricochet back to you. You can't depend on your ears. You have to watch a conductor. Otherwise, everything's going to turn into total chaos. Well, as a Hunter faculty member, I'm extremely proud that Rod Ramos is going to be making his debut at Geffen Hall. Uh, I think that we have had so many wonderful composers and singers and musicians that have come through this program over the years who have gone on to do great things. 